Saudamos a todos com a paz do Senhor Jesus. I plead everyone with the peace of the Lord. In reverence to the word of the Lord, let's stand up at this time. <coughs> We're going to open our Bibles in the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 7. And we're going to read five verses. 37, 38, and after that, 47, 48, and 49. <coughs> Luke 7, verse 37, 37, 38. Right. And it says, the word of our Lord. And behold a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought the alabasters a flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears, and wiped them with her hair of her head, and she kissed his feet, and anoint them with the fragrant oil. Uh, verse 47. Verse 47. I'm sorry. <coughs> and it says, Therefore I said to you, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Um, verse 49. And those who sat at the table with them began to, uh, to say to themselves, Who is this? who even forgives sins. In verse 50, Then he said to the woman, Your faith, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Oh Lord, we want to adore you. We want to thank you. We want to thank you for this um, moment of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We thank you. And plead in the name of Jesus. Amen. The brothers may be seated. <coughs> The word uh, talks about about woman from the city. And here we have many cities who are connected with another on their field, Pompano, uh, Coconut Creek, Margate, and so on and so on. And in the time of Jesus, Jesus, he entered the city. And when he entered the city, the word says that a religious man, he invited and even stole that he asked for Jesus to go to his house. And he prepared um, the supper for them and there at the house of the man that the Bible says that was religious the Pharisees it was there um, those who he invited everybody was sitting at the table with Jesus everyone was sitting there with the Savior uh, Redemptor, the Lamp of God, the Alpha, Omega, Omega, the Creator, the First, the Last, the Son of Justice, and all of them were there to go to eat. And the Bible says, my brother, this, that every time a man he calls Jesus to go to their house, Jesus goes. And there was a guy called Jairo. He said, Come to my house. And Jesus went. Peter, he was with Jesus in the synagogue. 
Peter liked Jesus so much that he said, oh, let's go to my house. Jesus went to his house, the house of Peter. There he, he saw that the mother-in-law was sick and the mother-in-law was cured. And Jesus says, those who seek me, no other way I will send one way. So you that are here with us tonight, know one thing, if you invite Jesus to go to your house, you can prepare the supper, because Jesus is going to be present in your house. <laughs> and we can say, my brother and my sister, that it is a really great privilege, you, you, me, us, to receive our Savior in our house. The person that is one of the most, most important people in this planet, it is our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's so important that He uh, divided the temple into before Him and then after Him. So we can see the uh, importance of our Savior, our Savior Jesus Christ. The humanity it knows two things, before Jesus and after Jesus. And this man, this God, this Christ, this Salvator, Savior, he was in the house of this uh, Frosso. Farsi. And with the Farsi and Jesus, there was those who he invited. But the Bible, my brothers, doesn't say that nobody that was at the table with Jesus, not even the one that invited him to go to his house, received him the right, the right way. Jesus, he was invited just like anybody else. Oh, I'm gonna invite the brother Wayne, um, brother Ronaldo, brother Ronaldo. I'm gonna invite Jesus. And he was treated the same way at the house of that person. There's another text in the word of the Lord that says when when Jesus went to the house of Martha, um, Martha and Mary for the first time, Mary was there, you know, doing a lot of things. Martha was there. No, it was Martha that was there working and doing a lot of stuff. But Mary, she gave value, the presence of Jesus at her house. So she left all the things that she had to do to the side. And she sat right in front of Jesus. And Jesus said, Mary, she did the, she did the right choice. She chose the right part. Because the right part, it is to be in front of Jesus, with Jesus. Jesus entered my house. And what place of my house I'll be? In the feet of Jesus. When the Pharisee died, oh, the brother Martha and Mary, Jesus was invited to go back to the house. And there, he, he resurrected Lazarus, the brother oh, Martha and Mary. After that, eight days after, Jesus was invited again and he went as well. It was the third time that she went to the house of Martha and Mary. Martha, she got. Martha didn't do anything. Mary, she bought a, a vessel of perfume. Alabaster. You know Judas? Yeah. So he knew the value. So Judas, he knew the value of the alabasas of these. So he said, look, this um, vase, it costs 300 uh, 
Silver coins. Do you know what she did? She got it. She broke it. And she poured out of G on top of Jesus. Three, um, three hundred money. It was uh, three hundred coins. It was same thing as one year of your working. Imagine you, imagine you'll be working three hundred sixty. Uh, five days and you got all the money that you saved up during that year and you buy a present to Jesus only does that you know who those who loves a lot those who has gratitude in their heart and Mary she is grateful because Jesus was in her house. Mary, she was grateful because the Lord resurrected her brother. Uh, 3,000 of their money. Jesus vendeu Jesus. So Judas sold Jesus for the price uh, equivalent of 10% of the, of the money that Mary bought the thing to uh, throw in Jesus, put up on him. So we see here a really big difference. Who gave more value to Jesus, Judas or Mary? Oh, Mary, of course. And who was blessed more, Mary or Judas? Mary. Mary loved more. Judas, he didn't love Jesus. And here, my brothers, it's always about there was a banquet in the house of the Pharisee. Everybody was there. Many people were invited. Jesus was present. But a woman showed up that she wasn't invited. There was a woman that wasn't invited. The Pharisee. He forgot to invite that woman. Maybe because he didn't know that woman. But do you know why he didn't invite that woman? Because he knew the woman. He didn't invite because he knew. It was a woman known. In the city. He didn't want that woman uh, in his house. But the woman, she didn't care. <coughs> the woman didn't go to the house of that man because of him. She wasn't there because of those people that was invited, the people that was uh, sitting at the table. No, she went there because of Jesus. My brother, the greatest blessing it is that when we go to the house of God, it is because of God. She knew where Jesus was. If I'd ask, where is Jesus? Many people will say, Oh, Jesus will be today in a certain place. She knew the time and the place. The right place that Jesus were. She wasn't invited. But she invited herself because the desire that she had it was of to be with the Savior, and she knew that the Savior wouldn't reject her and it wouldn't fail her because the Savior he knew that woman and that he was there at the moment at the place because of the woman. Because he had a great blessing to give it to her that day in that place. My brothers, 
Usually, we. Where is Jesus gonna be? Oh, uh, church Marnata, 7:30 at night. So we're gonna come without anything. And just seeking a blessing. And then you come without nothing, without anything. You're just looking for a blessing, and you get a blessing. We get a blessing, a deliverance, your cure, the desire in your heart. But the woman, she didn't, she didn't go there without anything. She went there with a, with a vase. And it wasn't empty, it was full. She had a vase, um, alabas alabaster. There were songs, those adoration, those glorification, those gratitude, those faith. And the, and the word says that she she is nicked in. She just settled in from behind. She didn't even want to be recognized. She got there. And she goes directly to Jesus. She knew who Jesus was. The text, the text here says that some people ask, Who's this? But that woman, she knew who Jesus was. My brother, you that enter here, you already know who Jesus is. You know what he can do it for you, for, for your family, for your house. That woman, she knew. She had, she had faith in Jesus. She was a sinner. Yes or no? Yes. So who doesn't have, who doesn't have a sin? He start throwing the rocks. The Pharisee, he thought that. Oh, I'm a really nice guy. I brought Jesus. I brought Jesus to the table of my house. <clears throat> Maybe I, do, I don't even consider a sinner. That's why, um, that's more like a mission to that woman. Because she came from behind. Why does she come from behind? What does that mean, coming from behind? She was ashamed. Suffer. Anguish. She was worried of being failed, rejected. My brother, my sister, we as men, as human, we fail. But Jesus, He doesn't fail. He, he doesn't reproach. He approves. She was anxious, worried. And she goes to the feet of Jesus. Do you know why? Because she throws herself in the feet of Jesus. Because she wanted to walk in the path. She, she wasn't walking in the path, but she wanted to walk in the path. Because the feet, it indicates, it means the, the walk to salvation. So, I'm a sinner, but... I want to walk in your path. So my brothers, when she gets to the feet of the Lord, she humiliates herself, she cries, she laughs, and she puts herself the vase of alabaster, her soul. It's all her, it's all her necessities in there. She exposed what she has inside. She, did, she opens her heart to Jesus. Let me cry on your feet, oh Lord. That's what she wants to do. She wants to cry on the feet of Jesus. Because he understood that she, she, she was a necessity to Jesus. So I'm going to open my life. I'm going to wipe myself. 
and that's what she wanted to do at that place. She brought the vase full just to turn out in the feet of Jesus. My brothers, she puts the hair from her head in the feet of Jesus because now she wanted to have a new understanding. It's not the religious understanding that those men that was there sitting at the table with Jesus, they had it. That's to know that they were saved and they deserved and the other people didn't. They didn't, that they would never sin, but the other people sinned. That they had the right to be with Jesus at the table, but the other people didn't because they were sinners. No. My brothers, every man sin. And she went there to dry his feet with her hair. She went to dry Jesus' feet with her hair. I mean, it talks about the the thought, a new understanding. It's a religious understanding because religious uh, religion doesn't save. Many people say, I need a religion. No, you don't need a religion. You need Jesus in your life, in your heart. The illumination doesn't save. Who saves is Jesus. The name of church doesn't save. The one that saves is Jesus. You don't need a religion. Religion that man had. That received the Lord at his, his house. He had a place for religion at his house. He had a place for Jesus at his, at his table. But he didn't have a place for Jesus in his heart and his life. And that woman, she got there because she wanted Jesus. Because she gave value. She gave value um, for the presence of Jesus in that place more than anybody else. She kissed the feet. It is common when the Jews, they'll go to their houses uh, in the time of Jesus. It is uh, the kiss. I don't know about today, but before it was like that. So Jesus entered a place that but the, the owner of the house, he didn't have any intimacy uh, with the Lord. What does it matter? Intimacy. So what does it matter if you have religion? I have Jesus in my house, but I don't have intimacy with him. Don't even know who he is, what he's capable of doing. That woman, she will kiss the feet, the feet of the Lord. She, did, she was given value. She was valuing the the way that she that she had to go to salvation. She, she would wash it, anointed, anointed with the oil. And the Lord was happy because of the woman. The owner of the house that Jesus got happy? No. Jesus was happy with that woman. My brothers are attitudes. You need to plead the Lord. It doesn't have to make the, the please men. Because only Jesus, he's the one that can forgive my, yours, our sins. Men can never do that. Only Jesus, he's the only one that can. He could bless that woman, no other men. My brother, nobody can bless you, nobody. There's no man under this earth that can bless you. They can help you. They can save your soul. 
Only Jesus. That woman, she didn't care that she wasn't invited. That wasn't a problem. I'm gonna go to Jesus the same way. I know he's not gonna reject me. I'm gonna throw myself up on him. I'm gonna talk and tell him all my suffers. Because I'm repentant. That woman, she went after Jesus because she was a sinner. But she was a sinner that was uh, re repented. Because there are many sinners who continue sinning. They continue uh, dis distancing from Jesus. But she was a sinner that got close to Jesus. She was a sinner that broke the vase on the feet of the Lord. She was a sinner that cried on the face of the Lord as she dried up Jesus' feet with her hair. She was a sinner repenting in the name of Jesus. So that's why she received the blessing from the Lord because she repented. Because she didn't want to walk on her path anymore. Because she wanted to walk. Because she wanted to walk in this new path that Jesus was opening to her. Because that one that goes with Jesus, a new creature is, that was her desire. She wanted to be a new creature. She wanted to have a new life in the presence of the Lord. And Jesus, so he looks at that woman and says, I'm going to take away the obstacle. I'm going to take everything that is stopping you. Let's take out the sin of your life. Your sins are forgiven. That's all she wants to hear. I don't know what was your desire to come to the house of the Lord tonight. But the desire of that woman that night was for her sins to be forgiven. And my brothers, the, blood, the Bible says that... If you repent, your sins will be forgiven. And many people asked over there, Oh, who's this who forgives sins? Many people, people, <coughs> there are many people that don't know what Jesus can do. But Jesus, besides of saving, cure, mo uh, multiplying bread, resurrect his um, main mission and the reason that he was sent to this place to this earth the reason and the meaning for his death it was to forgive our sins the five in the name of the Lord because she because he is the one that takes away the sin of everybody <laughs> and that woman she left that place um, forgiven and for us to and for us to to go to heaven our sins needs to be forgiven not for men but from the Lord so the Lord says my, so the Lord said to the woman, My sister, your sins are forgiven. But he also says something else to her, and he's saying something to you, my brother and the church. Your faith saved you. Every time that the men go open the Lord in that situation, her sins are forgiven. And it's saved by the faith of the Lord. That woman, she had faith. And it was a faith that changed that place. That made her to go there and adore in the feet of the Lord. And it was his faith. The faith of redemptive. That made her reach. One of the greatest benefits that you can receive from the Lord. That is the forgiveness of their sins. In a place of eternity. That's what the Lord said. Go in peace. Your faith. She was saved by her faith. My brother and my sister. 
go in peace. You already saved. You already free. For the creed power that is in the blood of Jesus. Jesus is the one that died on the cross that he died for my and your life.
glorified in the name of the Lord. Amen. I invite the brothers to stand up at this time. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Oh Lord, we want to adore you. We want to thank you, Lord, because we truly um, chose the best part that is to be with you in your presence, in your feet, O oh Lord. In our thoughts, you are the one. We want to thank you for your way. We glorify your name because the door that the door that you opened and went on the cross it was in vain it gave us salvation we want to thank you your name because we have eternal life life gave it from you we want to thank you for the name of our church for everybody else who are here those who are visiting us for our kids we want to thank you for this church that one day will be in heaven. We want to thank you for this presence in our midst. Because we believe and we have faith that tonight you operated blessings. Glorify by the name of the Lord and the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> My brothers, when we were praying for the service, the Lord, He... He promised great blessings for those who will show up here in the church. Especially, um, it is to a woman that she finds herself in great difficulty. And she knows the Lord. And it was already given to her the promise that this barrier was going to be removed. But sometimes she didn't want to be able to do that. But tonight the Lord gave her once more this promise that He can do all things. That if you believe in the power of Jesus and from today you open your heart and you let Jesus conduct your life, you'll see that He can do all things. The compromise, uh, the thing that you need to be focused is not with the person, the pastor, but with Jesus. You need to believe that Jesus is the only Savior of your life. And when that happens, you see how powerful He is. There's no barrier, there's no difficulty, there's nothing more powerful than our God. And it's right here, the promise of the Lord. And it's in your hands. So if you want to take it, just open your heart. And you're going to leave this place transformed, forgiven for the power and the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus, he's the one that goes around the hearts. He knows us. He knows what we need. You don't have to say. You don't need to do anything. You only need to open your heart. And let Jesus enter. Because he goes around our hearts. The sincerity of man it is really important. Amen. So let's pray and in the service. So let's close our eyes. And at this time, you're going to be open the Lord and say, Oh Lord, I need this blessing. Lord, I need to have an experience. I need faith. I need to have my, um, my sins forgiven. I need to leave this place believing in the power of Jesus. So, ask with your mouth and you'll see what Jesus can do for our lives. Oh Lord, we want to thank you and glorify your name. We want to ask, oh Lord, that your word could stay in our hearts. The songs that are going to be sung, all the prayers that were made. O oh Lord, that's the answer of our prayer to you. It is the expression of our gratitude. That in everything they have done in our favor, 
that your Holy Spirit has delivered and had cured, brought salvation of all those who entered your house. We need, O oh Lord, we need you. We need the direction and the comfort. We need your Holy Spirit. That's why our prayer tonight it is stay with us and help us to accept and live in your presence. Seek us in peace. This is the prayer we do. In the name of Jesus. In your name we say the grace, the holy grace, the Savior of Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the, the sweets of eternal consolations, and the sweets uh, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit could be poured upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The brothers may be seated. If you felt the presence of the Lord, if you if you feel like yeah, you need a prayer, we are at your disposal to pray for you. If you want to raise your hand, if there's someone next to you, just raise your hand. We want you, we want you to leave this place with a great blessing from the Lord. Tomorrow in the morning at 10:30, we're gonna have our Sunday school. As well as 7:30 at night, we're gonna have our uh, service of glorification to the Lord, and also for the birthday um, of our sister Elijah, we're gonna glorify and we're gonna be here glorifying the name of the Lord. And once more for the victory that the Lord gave to our sister. Ah, uh, bless the Lord for everybody.